Welcome back everybody. This is Mandy from Hope Designs and I'm going to do a quick video using these kind of jagged edge coasters. These can be geodes. They can also be like an ocean type pour. And the first time I did them, I did them as an ocean pour and um, they turned out okay, but the, the colors didn't blend very well. So I'm going to try to use the same colors I use for my um, beach edge like cutting boards and stuff so this is resin art twilight orchid and there's a 20% off promo code for anything on color arts website um, whether you use resin or primary elements or pouring mediums or the prism pours a brand new mix of pigments coming out so that would be a great way to use that they are called putting on the glitz so that is awesome and um, they are semi opaque so our code is Mandy 1120 and you get 20% off the whole site if you order those uh, new pigments um, if you pre-order between now and December 9th you get a free color Greek Isles is the free color so check it out uh, this is mermaid by resin art Now, I have used a lot of micas and colorants, uh, but nothing compares to Leslie's stuff. So, look at that. I mean, that's just delicious. I'm trying to decide if I want to put this next to this or put the teal. Normally, in my beach pours, I do this color, and then I do blue moon, which is a little bit more of a true blue versus somewhat of a purple. Um... But I also know sometimes I tend to mix up too many colors. So um, I'm just mixing up small batches until it gets mixed in and then adding more resin as needed. So, And then this one is called uh, Surf's Up, also by Color Art. It's a beautiful teal. And I will also try to link our um, the Color Art resin Facebook group. If you enjoy doing resin art and you're not part of it, um, I am just a moderator for it, but I would love to encourage everyone to join and share the beautiful things that they're making. It doesn't have to be resin art that you're using. We would love to see it anyway. And I'm hoping to maybe even do some contests and stuff in the future. So beautiful stuff right there. <clears throat> All right, and then well, I'm kind of torn about which one to do next. So this one is called Celestial Sky, and it's from the Luster pig Pigments for Resin Art also. It's a really gorgeous color. I like super love it. And I wanted to put this next to the white because it's lighter. I'm a little torn about that though because it's very sparkly. And the white that I'm using is not from Resin Art. I'm waiting on my Milky Way because I don't have that one. Um, so I'm afraid that it will like get swallowed up by the kind of pearlescent color of the, the regular white. Well, it's not white, but it's like a frosty pearl from Woody's Goodies. It's beautiful white. But I do think in the last one, I did the seafoam Indian Ocean color from Woody's Goodies next to the white for the pearl. But this time, I think I am going to put... Look at that. Like, you can't make that up. It's gorgeous. Um, this is from Woody's Goodies. It's called Indian Ocean. I need to order the the seafoam green color from Color Art. I don't have it yet. <clears throat> I do really love this color though. I use this color in some of my um, like resin art, like my Texas and 
the crosses that I do if you follow our channel. I use this color a lot. A lot of people like it. And it has a beautiful color shift to it. So I have another one that's called Sea Foam from Woody's Goodies. And I like it, but I like this one so much better. Because I'm more of a teal green than a green green person. Okay. Now the last color I'm using is called Frosty Pearl by Woody's Goodies. And I thought about leaving out the white color this time, but I do think it adds a little something, especially around here. So if you saw our last video, they turned out, it was my first time using this mold, and they turned out all right. They weren't bad, but I'm hoping these will be better. Um, one thing I'm struggling with is... You know, most molds say not to torch them. Um, and then, so I did some flowers the other day, and I recorded it. I don't think I'm going to actually upload it, because they were kind of an epic fail. The bottom part looks pretty. But there's a lot of bubbles, and, you know, that kind of irritates me. So, in the past, I've sometimes torched in the cup and gotten rid of some bubbles. Um, I might do that, but... I brought my heat gun. This is kind of a hard rubber mold, so I brought my heat gun in case I just want to not obey the rules. Um, and I have my torch in here, so I might torch some of the bubbles in the cups. I did put a couple drops of 91% isopropyl alcohol in the resin while I was mixing it to encourage it to have bubbles rise to the top but <clears throat> you know how it's not a perfect science plus we just mixed it all again and created more bubbles so trying to not be out of frame let me get my torch Now you wouldn't want to do that too much because it's going to heat up your resin and cause it to cure faster. So I'm using Stone Coat Countertops Epoxy today. Um, I use, I usually use Stone Coat KS or Faux Rizzle. It depends on what I'm doing. I love Stone Coat and I like Stone Coat for coasters because I like that it continues to move. Um, I think that that helps create really cool effects when you're doing resin art. <clears throat> On the downside, something that's thinner like that um, also is a little less predictable. So if you... Like... When I did these flower coasters, and maybe I'll maybe I'll post them because I think we all learn from one another's mistakes, right? I always say that. Um, when I posted these flower coasters, I did a puddle pour for the first time, and it was kind of a fail. <clears throat> well, it was mostly a fail because I kept moving the coasters to try to show you guys what was going on. Um, and one of the compositions on one of them was just wackadoo. So. Anyway, um, but a lot of a lot of that is because you can't entirely control how it moves because it's so fluid. But you can also just mix it up and let it sit for a little bit longer. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to start with the back edges. And the last time I did this, I remember one of them was real crazy. So you can do this with your cup. Sorry, I have to concentrate. Look at that color though. I hope you guys can see how beautiful it is. Whoa. Okay, 
now that we know what we're working with, I'm going to hit it up again and again. Wish you all were here to tell me if you think we should put the mermaid or the surfs up next. I think we're going to do surfs up. This guy has a little bit less than the other ones. <clears throat> um, I know they're spreading out kind of crazy, but I'm not super worried about that because when we add the other colors, some of that will kind of self-correct. Now, of course, I don't want to waste anything here. I did mix up three ounces of resin. Actually, I mixed up four because I'm using my husband's four ounce or eight ounce resin cups, which is four um, ounces of each part. So I guess it's eight ounces total. Anyway, most of y'all probably undermount what I stood, but. Um, I don't know. Mermaid. I think we'll do it this way. Okay, this is surfs up. Um, let's start here. Oh crap. Sorry. Look at that color though. Woo woo. I drop some in a spot over here. I need to try to fix it. I don't know that I'll be able to fix it, but I'm going to try to get it out with this. I think that I'm going to call that good enough. This color teal is one of my favorite colors. Purple and blue, obviously. I use them all the time. I, I understand that I will have to diversify a little bit, but it's hard to beat that color palette. I also love like warm purples and like red and fuchsia and gold, um, but I really lean toward a lot of the same colors all the time. But I've been branching out a little bit more. I think sometimes you have to because especially when you're in the YouTube world people do get a little bit bored I think and they also want to see different colors and I'd love to show you guys all these beautiful pigments so sometimes I try to challenge myself and use color combinations I wouldn't normally use I am a little nervous about this right here because that's where our white goes <laughs> so it's starting to uh, encroach on um, the other area, but we can't entirely control that. So this is going to be, that one was Surf's Up, this one is Mermaid. I think one of my favorite things about fluid art is the fact that you can't entirely control it. I think that sometimes we need things that we can't control all the time but it definitely works on your control issues I think when you're like no don't go over there like just now I poured this on the edge like a ding dong oh well um, our waves may not be white they may have to have a different destiny because this is uh, getting pretty blue in here. I'm trying to kind of force some of that teal backwards from here. Um, I'm not sure how well I'm succeeding, but. Oh crap, I don't know if y'all can see what I just did. I just ran this color through the other color 
And this is not like supposed to be a ribbon pour or anything, so it's kind of a bummer. Thankfully, they're they're not similar colors, but they're like one is a little bit more of a green version of the other. But oh well, it'll be fine. They'll merge a little bit more in a minute. This one's getting real crazy. I don't know. So just forgive my mess in the background. I'm trying to like mass produce things for this thing we have on Saturday. And I have stuff everywhere. Pray for my husband. He's being really patient. Um, but I don't know if we're going to be able to put any white in here. It may just not be meant to be. So I have a whole bunch of white that so this is the Indian Ocean, and I honestly don't know what we're going to do with this guy either. So I'm trying to pour on the edge and push some of these back. Not the easiest task in the world. Oh crap. So this is kind of turning into a puddle pour, but we still need epoxy to fill up the mold. so. <clears throat> it's not like we can just stop and be like, oh, okay, donezo. We still have to fill up the mold or the coasters are going to be really skinny. And so what's happening is as I pour the new stuff, it's kind of pushing the other design back, which is kind of intentionally what I'm doing. Look, I did it again. Dang. So now I want to focus on this one because it doesn't have as much in it as its friends do. Okay. I do like the colors. I don't, I'm not sure how I feel about using white, though, at this point. We'll see. I kind of think we need it, though. It seems like at the edge. I just, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. I'm trying to clean up my mess along the way. Now this is seriously one of my favorite colors, the celestial sky color. It is an awesome color. All right, let me see if I can't push this guy back over here. I hope that the whole thing is in view for you guys. I'm almost even having to like climb up on the side of the mold just to try to get that color in there. And I thought about starting with the wavy part, but I feel like the white would have just kind of gotten swallowed by the other colors as we added them. So I didn't do that for that reason. Now notice this one for being so light is so sparkly. So I think it will blend really well in a minute. But that was my hesitation with putting it in the front is because the next one that I'm going to use is not as sparkly. I'm going to use a little bit more of this one and this one because this one seems to have less stuff in it than the others. Okay. And now this one. See, I like how, this is what I like about Stone Coat. You see how these colors here are blending together? The last time I used them, I used a, th a thicker resin, and they didn't do that. They were very liney. And I didn't like that. I mean, somebody still bought them. They still liked them. I marked them way down, though, because it wasn't what I intended. But I guess, I mean, they probably didn't know that. But I like how Stone Coat does this. And that's one of my favorite things about it. 
is that it creates that effect that you can't like manufacture that. <clears throat> and I drug something through here. I don't know. Oh, that's worse. Well, we're going to move it around in a minute anyway. I'm not going to worry about it. I think it's Celestial Sky because it's very glittery. I was trying to come up with an idea for like some geode style coasters with like some teal chunky glitter in the middle. I think Celestial Sky might be the one. All right. This is the Frosty Pearl. So this is a very satiny pearl color compared to that kind of blusterous glittery color. So you can kind of see where my hesitation was. It almost would have been better to just consider sticking with the blues. But I think as it continues to move, it's going to look pretty cool. And I'll be glad we added it. I don't know. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Next time, pearl or no pearl? Or could use like an Avalon shell that's just glittery, like interference-y. I sure love to use that one. Sorry if my arm is like right in your way. Kind of like when I do blooms, my head's like right in the camera view when I edit the videos. I'm like, oh my gosh. So some of this blue is probably going to show through the pearl. I mixed the pearl up with a little bit more transparency on purpose. Um, and I know it looks like I can't color inside the lines. I'm actually trying to hit up the edges of this on purpose. To kind of give it some place to bounce off of. And I hope we have enough resin in here, y'all, because some of these look a little shallow. This may be an experiment gone wild again. I should have used like different resin, but then I wouldn't have had the effects that I wanted. Like I have some tester batches that People send me sometimes to try it out because I have sensitive skin so sometimes people want me to try something and see if it um, if it reacts better to my skin so I have a feeling that that's going to turn kind of a light color so I'm gonna very gently torch I know I'm not supposed to whatever I got this mold on Amazon so it's not as expensive as some of the other ones I get now I think I'm gonna grab uh, I don't know, the heat gun, and just, you know, so, um, I'm going to keep one glove on, um, I will try to remember to link the heat gun that we use, it is on Amazon, and it is a Seek One heat gun, it has attachments and all that, it's relatively inexpensive, which is one of the reasons we like it. And so this is kind of interesting. This took, this um, took four ounces of epoxy altogether. That's kind of crazy. So <clears throat> my geodes, which I feel like take more, only take um, three. So this mold must be a lot, oh no. It didn't take a full four ounces. <laughs> I still have some. In fact, I wonder, probably took a little less than three. I wonder if I should add some more pearl. Let me see. No, I don't think so. One of them looks, well, it's not. I'm gonna do this first. Not using using kind of a low um, low blow. Hold on, I just saw something that needs to come out of there. Now I have a toothpick in here. 
there's like a piece of fuzz or something right there. a little higher that might be too high the bad thing is my extension cord doesn't have what's needed to make this work so I don't know if I can get to it Grr. let me see oh, I just got epoxy on my hand I don't know why I bought an extension cord that doesn't have a three prong thingy it doesn't make a lot of sense does it I'm going to do this so I can do whatever I'm doing on one side to the other. Oh no, see what happened here? So unfortunately, I should not have picked it up. Trying to get this purple back out without overheating it, which is kind of difficult. Yeah, so I don't really know if I did a good job with these, y'all. I like how it's the blues are blending. I definitely lost a lot of the, the purplish blue. So I have, um, I have a couple of options. I can either mix up some more of the purplish blue, or I can sort of make these match by moving it back a little bit. It is very hot, so I need to be careful um, because I don't want to burn it. Unfortunately, the edges are not going to be white. They're going to be like this milky blue color because of the stuff that was already there when we poured in the white. So I don't know what that's going to look like when it dries. But. So I'm just kind of moving this around a little bit to... is I'm just trying to wake this part up a little bit but I don't know that I'm actually getting anywhere with that 
So I'm kind of leaning toward moving, pushing this back and letting that, the, the other option I have is to add some more right there, but then I have to make sure it blends and that's not always fail safe. So let's tinker a little. It's very liquidy, so I hope I didn't ruin my mold. I really heated it up a little bit too much. I'm not sure which direction to go. Part of it is also that I have it on this like box so that it will dry level. Um, and I don't think it's level down here. So, I don't know if I actually need to put more in there or just maybe grab some from over here. Share. Hmm. Not sure if that's helping or making it worse. I kind of like the way mixing it, oh, except for that, is going because it's a little bit dark compared to everything else, which I like about it, but when I do my beach pours, I usually, when I bring this color, I add in the blue moon color and then I drizzle it in the next color just to create a, like a transition. So I guess that's what I'm trying to do to kind of balance it out a little bit. I don't know if it's working or not, but that's what I'm trying to do. Let's see. I think I'm gonna switch attachments. Oh. I probably can't. It's probably too hot. Yep. So use it very lightly. I kind of like what's happening there. So I, even though it's kind of strange, I kind of like what's happening there. So let's kind of make it more intentional over here. And over here. And then I think I better leave it alone because I've probably overheated my epoxy at this point. But I think that was a good recovery. What do y'all think? I'd love to know. Kind of adds a little, little depth. Now it's real fluid, so it's going to continue to move a little bit. Um, but yeah, we can kind of do that. And it'll kind of blend in. Might actually bring our colors together a little bit better. So yeah, let me know what you think. I kind of like that. It's kind of crazy, but I kind of like it.
Now, this, I'm a little sketchy on how this is gonna do. I'm tempted to kind of wreck that on purpose by like maybe bringing this in so that it looks intentionally swirly. Um, but I kind of think maybe we should not do that. I don't know, I'd love to know what y'all think. This is like the longest short video ever, right? But I, I don't know, I kind of feel like this would look really cool if we did something similar. I have like no glove on, so I'm just doing some real dumb things right now. You know, like that. Just kind of bringing some of this blue back to the front. Well, that was a little crazy because I brought the pearl in. But yeah, something like that. Let's see. This looks kind of cool. We could call it a masterpiece instead of a masterpiece. I think that's going to be like my new, my new word. So, um, if the ocean were marbly, it would probably look like this. <laughs> what do y'all think? Masterpiece, mess, or masterpiece? Let me know. Let me know what you think. I'd love to know. Thanks for. <laughs> If you're still here, thanks for hanging out this long and uh, amusing me by supporting my channel. Thanks again for watching again. Um, promo codes in the description box for uh, resin art, color art, um, various other things. I try to link as much stuff for Amazon as I can um, to help everybody make purchases. Um, but yeah, appreciate you guys. Thanks again for watching.